This conference will now be recorded. Okay, um, are you able to see, are you people able to see my screen? Yeah, yes, we are okay. able to. Great, okay. Um, so in, in the previous session, um, as a part of demo, we discussed like how do we write a test case using Playwright um, and TypeScript, right? So here we discussed uh, how do we start writing a test case? How do we basically, what, what are the things um, that we have to import in terms of writing the web, web automation that we have seen in terms of Playwright and TypeScript? We have also seen like how do we install the Playwright using TypeScript? Uh, and how do we create and, and like we have also gone through what are the different folders that it creates what are the different uh, files that it create basically or generate at the time of installing the playwright and um, then we have seen excuse me sir i actually i couldn't attend the the last sessions are we going to revise all of this uh, or is this required to understand the further things no right uh, just a minute Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so this is this was a part of and the today that we are going to do will be a part of the demo session itself. Everything will be covered okay. from scratch again when we start the real session. Okay, so today today will be a real session or again a demo one. Today I'll also provide one of a demo and from the next uh session onwards we'll start with typescript so first like we'll not directly jump on to the type uh, playwright we first uh, have to understand the basics of typescript and then we'll move to the playwright okay okay so in terms of today uh in in the uh, last session we had seen that uh how do we write the web automation using playwright in terms of today uh we'll try to check how do we integrate API testing as well using Playwright and uh, like inside the web application itself or the web automation itself. Okay, so in terms of today, we'll see like a mix of web and API automation using Playwright. Okay, and then from the next session onwards, we'll have, we'll start with the TypeScript, uh, like basics of TypeScript, and then we'll, we cannot directly move to the Playwright without understanding the TypeScript. Okay. So, uh, does it answer your question? Yes, sir, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Okay, great. Okay. Um, also, just wanted to check with you people, like whoever is attending the session today, um, are you people comfortable in this 8, 8 p.m. IST or are you looking for some other time time frame? Like we also have one session which is in the morning at 8 a.m. 8 a.m. is really difficult, but if something is around 4.30, 5.30 can also work. Okay. What about others? Uh, I feel comfortable with this timing. Because I could not, uh, my office time in is around 8 to 5, so I can attend this at my own got time. It. Got it, got it. Okay. Okay, great. Great. Okay, so let's go through with our uh, today's session uh, where we'll discuss about web and API automation in a mix. So before that, post try, we'll try to run this, this particular test case that we have completed in this last session in the previous session and then we'll see like what it is trying to do it is basically trying to launch launch the url and then trying to fill the username password and trying to click on the login button and after that we are also trying to assert by using expect function expect function in type in in playwright is used to assert the application um sorry i said the test cases so we are trying to do trying to check over here that uh, whether we have logged in successfully or not so what happened in general in in terms of example that we have seen um uh, for our application was this where what happened in term in after the login is we 
logged in into the application successfully if you log in successfully by providing correct username and correct password and if you click on login button you should be able to reach on the home page so we are as a part of this we are trying to validate whether we are on the home page or not so if you see this one this button dot custom this is basically able to identify if you go if you go and check inside this so we see the last time that we have written the locator having a class name so this is basically able to identify three particular uh, or five different uh, locators or the elements that we have on the application but we are basically interested in the first one uh, which i am which i am trying to um, like assert that whether we are on the home page or not okay so that's where we have used first as a method which identifies the first matching element on the page and then we are saying it should be visible okay there is a method known as to be visible in playwright which is used to say you which basically ensures that the locator that we have written over here is visible on the page okay this is the part of the test that we have written and then to run the test case we have to write npx playwright test as a command and we know that by default the test will run in a by default in terms of playwright the test case will run in a headless mode as we have already given like headless headless as a false inside the configuration which is also known as test runner file you can see here we have given as test headless equals to false and that's what it does run the test cases on all the diff three different browser by using headed mode okay so we have seen that it logged in into the application and then it also moved to the next uh, which is on the home page now let's create one more file where we'll try to check regarding web and api let's try to give the name as web api dot spec dot j spec dot ts okay so here uh, we'll try to check two things one is uh, one is how do we integrate the api testing and first we'll try to check the application that we are trying to go and check with the api uh, testing so what did we do here is we logged in into the application by using a valid username and valid password and then we validated whether we are on the home page or not so we are currently having only one test case so that is okay to log in into the application let's say we have 1000 test cases or 500 test cases okay so uh, that is uh, it is not required every time to you know log in into the application and then go move to the dashboard then do some kind of some kind of actions and all instead by using an api which playwright also support automatically so by using an api we can skip the login page check because whenever we write test case we first validate whether the login is working or not so those test cases we could have already written in one particular file now after let's say we have written 10 test cases to validate the login page test is working properly or not after that still we'll have a 490 test case let's say we have total as a 500 test case out of that we'll at least write 10 test cases to validate whether the login page this particular login page is working properly or not so this one so first we'll try to check with a valid username valid password invalid username valid password invalid uh, password valid username click on login button do not provide anything and then click on login button forgot password and so on okay um, once we confirm that the, everything is working fine in terms of login test case and then let's say uh, we have a lot of test case that we have written for dashboard page and other page which is like the, let's say home page order space card page and so on so here we do not even require to log in into the application and we can directly jump to the dashboard page without logging into the application so how do we do that we'll see using the playwright okay so this is the ap application that i'll try to um, you know demo it in in the today session where we'll use an api to log in into the application 
and after login into the application what happened we'll see first as a manual check and then we'll go to the automation so let's see what happened so whenever we in any of the application not only in this particular application in any of the application whatever exists till till today in any of the application whenever you log in you first have to give a username and password valid username and valid password as soon as you click on login button there will be one api call happen in and that you can see in the network tab how do you go to the network tab go to the application anywhere right click click on inspect it will take you to the elements tab and then from there you can go to the network tab okay now um, are we recording the sessions yes okay so now what happened in general is i have given a username i have also given a password now let's see what happened when i click on login button when i click on login button it it redirected me to the dashboard page but how did it identify whether i am i as a user whatever the username and password that i provided is correct so for that we can see there was an api call happen which which is this particular api call okay so this is the api call have been called what is the method this was a post call and it is saying status code as a 200 okay so what happened in general is this is basically a front-end application the application that we are trying to use right now is a front-end application there will be one back-end and one database as well for this particular application what is back-end so back-end system where all the data and front-end will be interacting through so how the back-end system and front-end system will work is both of the back like both of the system which is back-end and front-end will interact with the api call so currently what happened is at the time of logging into the application i have given a username and valid password on the front end part now whether that is valid or not how it happen how it interact is basically going through with this api call so it will do a api call with some kind of data that we have given which is this one so i have provided username as this and password as this so this api said that this api basically made a call after clicking on login button this api call have called with a username and password with the username that i have provided and a password that i have provided okay then this particular api called the backend system and the database to check whether the user id and password that means a username and password that i have entered on the front end is actually correct or not if it is correct then it will throw us some kind of response with a token it will generate a token to identify our user okay so it will any not not only in this application any of the application will generate some kind of authorization some kind of token to identify a user as soon as they are in the active state and it also have given some kind of user id that is for the my username and password and it also displays a message known as login successful when did it happen when i provided a username valid username and valid password okay now now let's say if you try to again launch the same url in the same browser over here let's say i'm i'm again trying to launch the same url using the same browser what happened over here is it will directly take us to the home page because we have already been authorized Right? we have already logged in into the application and as soon as we log in the developer write a code in such a way that this token id whatever it is generating after successful login this token id will be set inside the local storage of your system this local storage is basically a part of the browser that we are currently working on okay following the session so whenever yes. whenever we successfully log in into the application developer will write a code in such a way that the authorization whatever the authorization it display in terms of this application it is token in terms of other application it might be named as authorization 
in terms of any other application it can be some other name let's say cookie or some other values okay but the concept will be similar so they will store our token inside local storage okay either they'll store inside a local storage or they'll in so store inside a session storage for any of the application this things happens in a proper way and whenever you log in whenever you try to launch that uh, launch the same application or try to launch the same application in the same browser it will not ask you to go for a login again and again it will directly take you to the home page but let's say if you are trying to if you are trying to launch the same application in incognito mode what is incognito incognito will not share any kind of cookie or cache value so it will be a fresh page login okay so now here it is not able to identify that we have already logged in into other browser okay now let's see what happened over here so just a couple of minutes ago i said that whenever we log in into the application developer will set our code into the local storage here it is saying that a key is a token and a value is this one whatever it is it has generated at at the network call so this one right now we have just moved to the other uh, this is this is an application this is a browser which is in incognito mode now here whenever we whenever we uh, you know launch the application it redirected us to the login page now let's say what happened if we set the same token and uh, token value that it has generated inside the local storage let's say i am just trying to set up it set it up manually over here the key as a token and then the value as this one whatever it has set over here so i've just set set the token and value manually whatever um, developer do at the time of successfully logged in into the application now see i am again trying to launch the same url i'm just trying to refresh it i'm just trying to refresh the page now see it has automatically taken us to the login it did not even ask to like ask us to sign in into the or login into the application why did it happen because i have already given a authorization that this user has already been authenticated that means we have set the token at the local storage so that it will automatically identify the user that it has already been logged in into the application okay so what happened here we did not log in into the application but the token that it has generated or the authorization token that it has generated we did set up that in the local storage to skip the login page okay we, what did we do we have just set up the or we have just stored the authorization token inside the application which is like local storage we have just set up the token so that it automatically identified that it is an uh, it is basically a user who has already been authenticated that's why it has taken us directly to the home page without even asking for go to the login okay so did you understand the concept what what i was trying to explain over here yes no yes yes okay All right so this is what we'll try to do in terms of today's session that automate this to to uh, automatically store the value inside the local storage so that it will skip the login and will directly move to the application which is like on the dashboard page okay let's see how do we do this is like if we have only one test case or two tests or 10 test case this you will not be able to see the benefit of this but if you have 500 test case you will see a huge difference uh, between the execution time let's say um, you know launching the url and after that filling the username and password and clicking on the login button if it is taking one second time let's say for example if all the three steps are taking one second of time and you have skipped the login page for 490 test cases example out of 500 you have skipped the login test for 490 test cases 
at that point of time it will save us 490 uh, basically 490 seconds so if we consider that 490 seconds will be somewhere around 8 to 9 minutes it will it will basically save the execution time with 8 to 9 minutes which is again a huge right so let's see how do we achieve that in terms of automation using playwright here if we see uh, this is a complete web automation where we have used a complete web automation by using a locator launching the url using locators we have identified the username and password exactly similar things we have to write in terms of the in terms of the uh, api like mix of web and api automation as well okay so as in the previous session we discussed that we have to import first test and expect in each and every files wherever we try to write the test cases what is it used for a test function is basically used to write a test uh, like test in playwright and expect is used to write the assertion in playwright so here the test function will basically take two parameters one is uh, title and other is a uh, body details is optional which we will see in the later sections okay so first we'll say like let's say web api automation is a title name and here we have to write a body which is a function so we can write async and here we'll try to write a function which will be this one so what we are trying to do here is we are trying to write an api call first so what happened here uh, in terms of the manual things that we were trying to that we were trying to check is we had seen that here uh, we first launch the application that means launch the url and then we identified that in the network call i mean at the time of login into success, successfully login into the application it made this particular api call it basically called this particular api which is which we can see inside a header so this is an api which is having a method as post and then this is also accepting a body which is this one so let's try to check in terms of the postman which is uh, mainly which is basically working for a test manual manual test of like manually checking the api testing okay so let's see what is the api that we have so this is the api that we are trying to call what happened we'll see it in terms of the manual testing first this is the api that we have given what is the method all these details you will basically get by the developers inside your organization okay so second is request method what is the method that we have here is post so we can select from here it is a post and what is the body that it requires so body is basically username as this one what is body body is basically we are trying to send the data input data so in terms of login what happened in terms of login we have to provide some input which is username and password that is what known as body which we have to provide it over here at the time of calling the applicant calling the api so that body that i have provided it over here which is username and password and now as soon as i click on send button you'll see like it will generate an a token it has generated it has also generated a different ui and a message which is login successful user id will always be same for this particular user email or email now if you again click on send you will you can observe that this token will change every time so if you click on send we can see that this token have been changed every time user id will always be same because i'm trying to use the same username over here let's say if i use my other user id that i have let's say i'm just trying to provide it over here um, as this user email at that point of time you will see that it is also changing the user id because user id will always be a unit so if you see this we can see that even the user id have been changed and then the token have been checked so after calling this api it will basically give us a json format of response which is token user id and message 
this token we have to get it from the api response and that we have to set inside the application storage that we had seen over here so what did we do inside the application inside the local storages we have set the local token and the value of the token so that it automatically skip the login right so this is what we have to do so one more thing that whenever we have to get the token we basically have to get the token before running any kind of test cases right it basically have to we have to get before running any kind of test cases exactly in the sense right let's say if we have uh, 500 test cases and we want to skip login test or we want to skip login uh, login into the application for all the 500 test cases, that means we have to get the token before running all the test cases inside our framework right so playwright has given one annotation one uh, hooks hooks is basically a predefined method which is used to do some kind of setup okay so in terms of playwright they have given a hook known as before all what is the use of this before all is declares before all hook. that is executed once per worker or worker process before all test so whenever we define before all it is similar to test ng before all if you have worked on java earlier java and selenium then you might be knowing that there is a uh, hooks known as before all annotation inside the test engine which used to run before running any of the test case inside the framework so the similar uh, explanation is here for the before all as well will uh, if you are unable to understand this do not worry for that will again once again will you know make you understand each and everything whenever we start running our running our playwright session uh, like real play, playwright session okay so here um, inside the before all we basically before all means it basically runs before running any of the test cases and it, this before all will accept another function which is uh, which is basically an asynchronous function will be happen and we do not require any parameter over here we'll write a function and inside that whatever the api call that we have to make will make it over here okay now in terms of uh, web application if you see we basically create a this page will basically create a, a browser context as well as it will create a page inside the application inside the browser so that we can automate our uh, whatever is necessary in terms of the automation now if you talk about in api in api testing or getting the or calling the api we do not require any browser to be open api is entirely apart where we will be having a request api which is uh, which is this one request api in this sense the api call it will happen so the in terms of api testing we will have a request url we'll have a request method we will also be having a what kind of data that we have to send and what kind of response we will be getting from the from after calling the api okay so to call an api we have one another um, function that we have to import is known as request request is a function which is you request is a function or method available inside a playwright test module which is used to help uh, which is basically useful in terms of automating the api okay so by using request we will be able to create a context for the api and we'll also be able to uh, call the basically we'll also be able to um, do an api call and get the response uh, inside the after after basically calling the api okay so as i said we'll using the request we'll first create a context which will be again a, a request dot new context what is the use of new context it will create a context it basically creates a new instance for api request context so what we are trying to do it will just make a ap it will just create a con instance for api request 
what is mean by that i'll just explain you so this will return whenever we <clears throat> okay let me complete this so api if let me call it as api context context and this okay so what we are trying to do here is if you see this new context new context basically trying to uh, you know create a new instance of the api request what is meant by that so it will say that we are trying to create an instance in terms of browser application also it will first create an instance for the browser and then after that it will create a page inside that so whenever uh, if you try to see this page you'll see that uh, if i show you the result and there you will be you will probably be able to understand so here we have okay let me try to show you the result over here i'll explain you how do we you know check the results so if you try to check the results in in terms of before hix you will see that it basically launched the browser whatever the browser that we had given and it also created a new context over here so here in this terms it is creating a browser context as we do not require browser to be open in terms of the api testing so we are trying to create a api context and after that after creating a browser context it is also creating a new page inside the browser so that what is new page whenever you click on this plus it will open a new page inside a browser this is known as a new page so that once this page will be created we will be able to launch our application or launch the url on the page okay so here in terms of this in terms of api testing we basically do not require web application to open we only require a api context to be created and that api context we have stored inside a variable known as api context and using this variable we will be able to create we will basically be able to create the or call the api so what is the api that we have to get is go to the postman this is the url or the api that we have to make a call what is the method method is post method okay if we also go to the application there also we can see that the in terms of this the request method is post url is this so what what do we have to do is we have to make a post call so by using this variable we can use a post call which is a post method that we have to make using a post and then this post will require basically one url that means the api call that we, that we are trying to make and then second is options options means here we can try to provide a different values different values in in terms of our example the first api is this one and second it will take a body which will body in the sense different types of parameters it can take that will go inside a curly braces okay so we have to write it inside a curly braces what kind of options that you can write it over here one is a data which it says that what whenever we have to send the username and password we can provide it inside the data if you have to send the header we can provide it inside the headers if you have to also send some kind of form data then we can uh, you know provide it inside a multi-part if you have to send some kind of params sometimes we'll have a uh, uh param parameters to send inside the in in terms of the api at that point of time we can use params as a as an option okay so in terms of this we are just trying to send the payload payload in the sense the username and password that we are trying to send it over here so username and password is will be in the form of this one so this is the request parameters request body okay so let's try to store inside a variable which is known as let's say payload 
okay i'm just trying to say as a payload and inside this we can store the values okay so we have just stored a value which is in terms of object which is a key and a value key and a value okay so this payload we have to send along with the api call and that payload as we have already stored inside this particular variable so we can call it over here as a payload okay able to follow the session yes a little bit we can follow no worries no worries uh, so even though if you are getting like 10 percent that is okay it's just because you have to understand a little bit more thing in terms of the playwright uh, before going for this uh, but I just wanted to show in terms of a demo that we can also do uh, API testing using along with the web application. So I'm trying to make you at least like, you know, if you understand 10% that it, that will also be okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So what did we do here? We have just made a call that we have done in terms of manual testing, manual API testing. What did we do? We have just called an API method was post. And then this request, we got it over here. Uh, sorry, this response we received after calling the API. After like this API, then the method was post, and then we also sent it the input ID, input, uh, which is like a body of the API or the payload of the API. That is known as a payload in terms of API terminologies. Okay. And after that, after calling, uh, if after clicking on send button, we'll basically get this in the JSON format. I'll let you know how do we get the data from JSON, but for now I'll write uh, how do we get the data. So if you see this post method, post method also return us some kind of response. So this says that it will return a API response, and that API response will try to store inside a variable known as let's say I'll just say it as API response. Okay, this API response is having all the response, all the like uh, after clicking on the send button, after making a re request, it is displaying us some kind of response. What are the response? It is displaying 19 types of headers as a response. It's displaying a body as a JSON format, which is token, user ID, message. It is also displaying message, which is 200 K okay, as a status. That means the request has been successful okay so for now we'll just get the value as a token from the json okay do not worry how do we get that i'll explain you again each and everything in the later sec later uh, session whenever we start with the api in terms of playwright so first as we know that every every response are different so if you see this response are in a form type which is having a key and a value pair. This body is again a JSON format, which is a token. So we are basically interested in getting the response body, which is available as a JSON format. What is done by JSON? So whenever you see this inside a curly braces, is basically known as object in TypeScript. Okay. And this value, whatever you see as a key, user ID, and message is known as a key. And then all these are values so json format value will be available as a key value pair key and then there will be some value again key some value and again key some value so we are interested in getting the token we know that there are different types of response so we are currently interested in getting only the json format of response so we can just say that we can directly get the value by using a json method on the response that we have received okay so what we are trying to do we are trying to get only the json response that it is throwing or returning us inside the api response and that we can store inside we'll say it as a json response do not worry if you are unable to understand this i'll make you each and every bit of this to understand in our uh, main sessions okay now we are interested in getting the token value from this json response so to get the token we can directly say json.token 
okay the json response that we have received here if you okay let me try to print the value and then you'll understand what is this json response so we will say console log and then json response now let's try to print once and then we'll see what is happening so if the if everything is goes in a proper way we'll see that it will generate some kind of response so mpx playwright test and we'll only run this particular file which is known as api.spec.ts which is available inside test so it will not be i guess it is running for three different api uh, that's that is fine that's it run let it run so here if you see um uh, it has first uh, it, we have directly printed the json response so we can see the json response is exactly similar to whatever we received in terms of the blade uh, in terms of postman by doing a manual api test right it is having token it is having user id and it is having message if you just want to get the token then we can directly write a response which is json response dot token and now if you try to print let me comment out uh, two other browser that we have over here and just try to run for one particular browser and now if you try to see over here we'll only get the token value out of the complete response as we are trying to get the token so you see here that it has just given us the token value that we are currently interested okay and this token value we can store inside a variable again okay so we can say that let's say key const token equals to json response dot token what did we do here we are just trying to get the token value out of all the json response so from here whatever we have received from that we are just trying interested in getting the token value okay so this here we will be able to get the token but as we have declared a local variable over here which is inside this particular function so this local variable will will be having a scope inside the function itself okay and we are we will be using this token in the later section of the test cases so how can we utilize that as we have created a local variable so what we can do is we can declare a global variable over here which can be utilized at any point of time in our test cases and in the other other part of the application as well so here we'll declare it with let okay so why why let because const keyword basically used for storing or uh, declaring a constant variable we'll talk about that whenever we go for whenever we go for you know understanding what is uh, what is variable in terms of typescript okay so now we have received the token over here we'll be receiving the token complete token value from this particular part let's try to print it out this loop token as well whether it is trying to generate the correct value or not and now what is our goal our goal is to set this token inside the application uh, applications local stories okay we have just received the token and now our main goal is to set the token inside this particular local stories now let's see what happened how do we set that so playwright has given one application one method known as playwright has given a method known as uh, add in it add in it script so what is this method known as it says that it can run it it is helpful in running a json javascript uh, like code in terms of javascript whatever the script that you can write inside the add init script method it will run basically on the in um, on basically on behalf of javascript so it says that adds a script which will be evaluated in one of the following which is whenever the page is navigated or child page or any kind of script that we have to evaluate in terms of the document okay so add init script is a method which is available 
automatically like available inside the playwright we do not have to depend on any third party tool there is a method known as add init script which basically takes a parameter which is script and all the value will go as a curly braces okay this method will be helpful in setting the whatever we want to set inside the application storage that means a local storage session storage all these things will be helpful in terms of setting by using add init script and this script will take a parameter which we have just seen that it will take a script as a function okay so what we can do is we can just declare a script over here this will be a function do not worry how, how we are trying to write the function this is basically an arrow function in TypeScript. Okay, so we are just trying to write a function and this function will try to set up our main, um, like inside the local storage. So what is this basically? This is a browser. Browser is having a window and inside that window we have a local storage. So this is basically a window inside that we have a local storage and there we have to set it up. So it's simple this is a window inside that there is a local storage and inside this local storage we have to set token and value so the the method is again very similar very simple it says that go to window and inside the window again go to a local storage okay and then set the value over here what kind of value we have to set a method is known as set item it will just set the value that we are trying to set so here the key it will take like this set item will take the value in key and value pair so you can see it will take the value in take the parameter in key and value pair so the key we know that has to be a token key will be a token over here that will be storing and then value whatever the value will be getting from the api call okay so first value we can set it as a token and the second value whatever the parameter that we have declared over here as a value and this value will basically be get, getting from the token that we have declared over here okay so this will return as a token and set inside the local storage okay and now we can basically try to check whether we can again launch the url by using a page.go to method and then what is the url that we are trying to fetch we can directly copy paste this one so here we can directly launch the url now you will see in terms of this application we saw that it will take us to the login page but now here we'll see that it will directly take us to the home page so let's do a validation as well by doing assertion this assertion is basically for the home page right so let's try to do an assertion by using the the expect function okay now let's try to run and see whether it is taking us to the login page or it is taking us to the home page one thing we have to make sure that on every each and every line of the code we have to write every keyword okay so we also have to write every keyword over here that we forgot to write earlier we have written await, await, and await. Let's try to run the same code and let's see if it is directly taking us to the dashboard or it is taking us to the login page. So if you see here, you can see that it directly taking us to the login page. Let's wait for a couple of seconds over here and then we'll see whether it is really redirecting us to the home page or not. Wait for timeout for let's say two seconds. And we are again trying to run the code which is api and now we see that it directly taken us to the home page it did not even ask to log in into the application so this was only one test case that's why it is not so helpful if you try to understand this but in general we'll have a lot of test cases inside the organization so let's make it as four more test cases with the similar things that we are trying to go through with so we'll just say it as automation one we'll change the title which is automation two we'll change the title over here as well three 
and we'll make it as four. So we basically have total five test cases available inside this space. One, two, three, four, and five. Now we'll see like we are currently writing the same validation for each and every test case, but we'll see like for the all five test cases, it will skip the login page. So for all the five test cases, it will skip the login page. So let's say if it is saving us one second of time for each and every test case in terms of logging into the application, then it will save us at least five seconds for running just five test cases. Imagine if you have 500, then it will save us 500 seconds, which will be close to eight minutes and execution time reducing from, let's say 20 to 12 minutes. It's, it's really uh, amazing work in terms of the organization. So from example, if we have reduced eight minutes, that means let's say earlier, if it was taking 20 minutes, then it will just take 12 minutes. Here we can see that within 12 seconds, all the five test cases have been completed successfully. And also if you do a parallel, parallel testing kind of, if you make everything as a fully, uh, fully parallel by using fully parallel true, then you will see that it will basically take uh, less number of seconds for executing all the test cases. Okay, so here we have uh, some kind of dependencies on the test cases, so it will not run for now. Uh, but, but if you see in terms of running the test case, it will basically take like, you know, uh, instead of 12 seconds, it will just take five seconds of time to complete all the test cases. Okay. So this is, uh, so this is what I, you know, wanted to give a demo in terms of our session today that we can also take a help of the API like playwright API testing, which will be helpful in terms of writing the test cases and utilize the API part inside the web browser as well to check some kind of corner cases or check, uh, or we can also skip the login page in terms of the testing and which will be helpful in, in reducing the time. What is the basically goal of, what is basic goal of the automation testing? The basic goal of automation testing the basic goal of automation testing is to reduce the a number of minutes or seconds that it take in terms of uh, you know doing a manual testing right so if manual testing is taking one hour or two hour of time we have to write our test case in such a way that we have to automate something in such a way that it has to complete a, each and every test case in probably 20 minutes or 15 minutes of time. that is why every organization and people are moving towards the automation testing okay so this is all about um, our today's session. Uh, do you have any kind of question for this? Um, yes, so, so I would have one question. Actually, mm -hmm. whatever you explained was, uh, we were I was able to understand what it means or something like that. But you know what all you were writing, it's it's really difficult. So after the classes, after the basic classes about TypeScript, will it be easy to understand the code? like what was written everything so see you were not able to follow the complete line of uh, things it's just because we have not gone through with the playwright right so whenever you go yeah. through with the playwright the basics of playwright at least this part you could have understood in the previous session if not then you can just you know visit our uh, previous recording uh, and try to understand if you are able to understand that means you will definitely be able to follow the sessions so what happened in general mm -hmm. is before going for the API kind of things, we basically have to go for each and every concept of the basic concept of the playwright so that you will mm -hmm. be able to follow each and every things. And whenever you go and understand basic concept, basic concepts of like, you know, the playwright or basic things of the playwright, you will follow each and everything that will be that we have written over here as well. For that, I'll request you to go through with the recording, the previous recording that we have recorded for this one. And there mm -hmm. you try to under, try to make sure like whether you are understanding or not. Okay. Because this, this is a very basic things for in terms of understanding the playwright. Whenever we okay. start our playwright session, we'll basically be starting with these things itself. So if you go and mm -hmm. check our uh, previous two recordings, and then uh, you try to relate it out 
uh, with our today's session whether you are able to follow that or not okay so well and that means whether you are able to understand or not but mm -hmm. um i'll i'll definitely say that uh, you know after going to the each and every session that will be going for going forward like in the later section of the after understanding the typescript you will definitely be able to understand each and every things because everyone where uh, see i have i have taught like more than okay so let me stop 